So we move on to our seventh speaker, uh, who is Shishti Mitra, also from National Institute of Design. She's going to speak on Devnagri typeface inspired by gender equality. So Shishti, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so I'm Srishti Mitra. I'm a final year student studying graphic design at NID Ahmedabad. And I'll be talking about my project, which is a Devnagri typeface inspired by gender equality. So this typeface was, again, it was a classroom project. And we were all encouraged to basically choose a sustainable design goal uh, of the UN and kind of make a design inspired by that. So the, the goal that stood out to me was SDG number four number five which is gender equality and so i started to think about how i could uh, probably design typeface inspired by gender equality and i noted down some of the the ideas of the gender equality movement which i could probably uh, incorporate into my typeface like equality and balance breaking the conventions questioning the existing norms of typefaces and, and uh, inclusivity and so when i tried looking for uh, if, if there was a, a link between gender and typefaces, I found some things online about the link of gender and Latin typefaces. For example, you know, scripts looking smooth and curvy and looking feminine or uh, bolder, wider typefaces being seen as masculine. And so this was all applicable for uh, Latin typefaces. So I tried to think, you know, whether it would also translate into Devnagri typefaces. And so to find out whether there was any link between gender and Devnagri typefaces, I sent out a survey where I took samples of 20 fonts and uh, asked people, you know, whether they saw the font as masculine or feminine. And this survey was responded to by 158 people um, of different age groups, different backgrounds and everything. Like, I'll tell you one thing here, I... I kind of expected most of the typefaces to be neutral, but if I just quickly show you some of the, the results of the 20 typefaces, then you can see that like there are pretty, pretty strong associations in a lot of the typefaces which I showed. So from the result of the survey, I could classify out of the 20 fonts, I could classify nine of them as feminine and nine of them as masculine. And two of them were like 49 to 51%. So I let them be as kind of neutral typefaces. And uh, to see whether I could try and figure out any trends in uh, the typefaces just seen as feminine or masculine, I categorized each one of them uh, into their the components of their type anatomy. Uh, so I made different charts, each of the, the 18 typefaces, and uh, to kind of see which, which of the facets were more common. I overlaid the feminine charts and I overlaid the masculine charts. So here you can kind of see, like if you look at, for example, gray value, then you can see that light, regular, medium type faces are more associated with femininity and like semi-dark and dark type faces are associated with masculinity. But uh, there was a problem with like uh, with this overlaid chart because if you look at width, right, you can see that normal is something that is common in both feminine and masculine typefaces. So like the, the terms which were common in both, uh, I assume would have a similar kind of effect on how the typeface is viewed. So to negate the effect of the common terms, what I did was I colored the two charts in additive complementary colors. Like uh, for example, here it's green and magenta and I overlaid them uh, using the rules of additive colors which is if you combine two complementary colors in equal equal quantities then it becomes white so what happened in the the final chart is that the common aspects basically got removed and so using this final chart i could kind of chart out some uh, the feminine facets the masculine facets and neutral facets and some terms here i'm marked with an asterisk and those terms are either they have like a huge impact on the overall form of the letter like for example uh, square turns or they're like very very heavily associated with that gender now like, now that i had that chart to go forward with some explorations uh, just to help me with some explorations what i did was uh, I made this tiny program to generate a random set of masculine and feminine facets as well as a few neutral facets. 
and i use those as kind of uh, guidelines to create a few explorations these are some of them and they're pretty they're all pretty interesting but for the sake of uh, time i'll just uh, show you which one i took forward in the end so this is the one i took forward in the end and um, the reason i did that is because like visually it's a very interesting form and um, for example here we have concave stems and uh, high contrast in the letter forms which is uh, something associated with femininity but the letter forms are also square and bold which is something associated with masculinity but you know square and bold is also kind of associated with strength so it was that combination of femininity and strength that really called to me so i went forward with this exploration and uh, in taking this forward Uh, since the typeface was more mostly based on like right angles and arcs i put it on a grid i did again some a bit of form refinement i finalized the root letters and then i derived again the rest of the letter forms from that put like a few lookups ligatures uh, into the typeface and uh, the typeface is a work in progress but this this is the current glyph set right now as it stands and uh, due to the ideology behind the typeface of kind of combining femininity masculinity strength uh, i named the typeface rani which means queen uh, in hindi so this is a dialogue from the movie dangal which says mari choriyan choron se kam hai ke and this is the typeface in use in a few places like on a magazine and the the character of the typeface lends itself very well to say branding and i showed the typeface to some of my friends and uh, relatives and like some of the descriptions they gave were like elegant strong royal retro like someone someone also said it's it's a queer typeface which i thought was uh, again very interesting how the letter forms could be seen by different people and what i want to do with this typeface in the future is to uh, increase the legibility of the typeface is there there are a few issues with legibility right now again i want to reform the refine the forms further uh, create new glyphs for this typeface create uh, latin glyphs too and i also thought of the possibility of having a family of typefaces inspired by the gender equality movement like for example rani here could be seen as a combination of uh, like femininity and strength you could have another combination of say you know uh, masculinity and delicacy or just like different explorations like that and uh, yeah i want to thank um, dr nanki nath who was the guide for this presentation like she she really inspired me and i couldn't have like got so far without her and i want to thank again idc for giving me this chance to talk and i hope um, everyone enjoyed my project and it led you to think a bit deeper about like the kind of biases we have in us and how typography can really affect how people uh, view your design so thank you thank you shrishti for that very nice uh, presentation and uh, you know your idea of uh, addressing uh, sdgs number 5 gender equality and i think your name rani is quite appropriate because it doesn't just cover one gender it actually covers two of three genders right because it has feminine gender it also has lgbtq right so and and of course when uh, they talk about sdg uh, gender equality they also mean trans uh, gender so uh, perhaps perhaps you could uh, expressly uh, try and build that into your presentation for future reasons and then of course rani would take on uh, added to another dimension of interest yes, definitely because people are grappling with uh, transgender right from which bathrooms they can use in public spaces to other things and it's not uh, surprising that uh, your uh, feedback said we are as well right so that that was a very important presentation in terms of taking up uh, an issue that uh, has always uh, you know that you don't really address gender in type you, you assume it to be neutral so 
that's the way forward. Uh, I request you to please stay on until the end of the presentation to address, uh, you know, whatever questions that will come from the audience. And there are quite a lot. They have comments and questions. Uh, so thank you, Shishti. Once thank again. you. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the end of the session, which is quite soon.